there are some people that are end up being disqualified, and that's basically people like me who really know Mormon theology. And <laughs> No, 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 no. What he is he is describing a cartoon, a yes. Looney Tunes version of our yes. religion. Don't take issue with our answers when you don't give any. But we're beating yeah. them. In real life, we're beating them. Okay, let's get scriptural here though. If they don't believe in eternal marriage, then why were Adam and Eve married before the fall? All right, yeah. So a couple of people uh, coming from the last video. It seems like a lot of people who maybe aren't part of the channel coming for the first time watch these debunk videos. You may have already noticed that this is not quite your typical apologetics channel. So <laughs> if you're if if you're tempted you to comment, to say, oh, that's ad hominem. What are you trying to say, like Luke? That, hold on, hold on. Just like. There's going to be some fun interspersed <laughs> with the apologetics. So I'd really appreciate if people would address the actual arguments we made rather than saying, oh, well, they made fun of him one time. So that means I don't need to interact with any of the other stuff that they brought up. Oh, well, also, hey, no, it's not no, ad hominem. Don't do that. It's not ad hominem, Luke, if you were calling into question a conflict of interest. And I stated at the beginning of our last video mm. that North American Christianity, especially evangelicalism and Protestantism, has a big time problem with priestcraft, mm. receiving, lar receiving large sums of money on behalf <laughs> of God and your authority on God, whereas in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, everybody's a lay clergy, everybody's a volunteer, so on and so forth, except for super high ups who are given a living stipend because we take away their ability to actually support themselves through full-time administration of the church. So, uh, yeah, I, if we're calling into question the amount of money his, that somebody's his made. His arguments aren't wrong because he's getting paid. Oh, yeah, right. No, they're it's just, just wrong because, on their own. Yeah, just because their tropes and lies recycled yes. from the 1870s. That's why. I mean, you know. Luke, you immediately, could, Luke immediately comes out to temper expectations for people oh, watching. I, I know that he's your boy <laughs> and you want to be friends with Mike Winger, all right? But I know, like, man. Okay, well, let's let's dive right in. We don't want to bury zone. the lead. We don't <laughs> want to bury the lead. So uh, you've prepared some clips for us. We've never seen these before, but we are going to re react. Here is clip one. Uh, about what looks like uh, it, it said the clip says missions. Let's see what he has to say. And, and see, and I've I've come in all nice and everything, and then this is probably the most inflammatory part of the whole thing that he said, <laughs> the most completely out there. So I'm not going to be looking too good after this. Okay, that's funny. All right, well, let's see what he has to say. Environment of a mission trip is such that <laughs> while they're going door to door, when they leave, they head over to the home of of missionary supporters. These people are paid by the church to help uh, house these individuals, and they're there to like clean up the mess each day and to kind of slowly indoctrinate okay. them this mission wait what? what who what okay you've got like three returned missionaries right here what what was this? okay luke luke take it away what do you got to say i don't know what to say i have no idea where he got this from. okay he's saying that the like, missionaries go back to homes of people who are the paid church pays people to have the missionaries come to their house after proselyting every night to answer the questions that all the evangelicals brought up and further indoctrinate them into the church. What? Wait, well, hold on. Let's see what he has. To, this is just weird. Yeah, just go back to the beginning. Listen to it again. Know. Okay, hold on. No idea what hold, he's talking hold on. about. Let's see, let's see what he has to say. <laughs> Environment of a mission trip is such that while they're going door to door, when they leave, they head over to the home of, of missionary supporters. These people are paid by the church to help uh, house these individuals. And they're there to like clean up the mess each day and to kind of slowly indoctrinate them. This mission trip is as much about indoctrinating the 17 year old guy or girl as it is about outreaching and trying to make more Mormons. All right. So hold on. What? First of all, first of all, what do not call it a mission trip. What? Sorry, Mr. Winger brother. It is not a mission trip. We don't go for two weeks down to Guada, Guadalajara take pictures with little brown and kids. take pictures yeah. with kids <laughs> and build some school. Okay. We pay our own money, tens of thousands of dollars to go to freaking Siberia for two years to preach to people who want to kill us. Dude, Jonah, life and where limb. did you serve and for how many years? I served in Novosibirsk, Russia for, t for two years. Okay. Luke Hansen, where did you serve for how long? 
Ghana and Sierra Leone, two years and a couple days. Okay. And I served in Buenos Aires, Argentina for two years. I have only become incensed and angry at one of my evangelical friends once, and you want to know when it was? We were talking in a in a, a, a restaurant at the bar over some hamburger sliders, and he was like, oh, please don't mistake my enthusiasm for God as, you know, an indictment of your character. We're kind of having this little religious evangelical. He wants to tell me that I'm corrupting the word discussion, sola scriptura this, yeah. the same garbage that Mike Winger is going to recycle about tropes of Mormon history that aren't accurate. And when I said, well, when I served my mission, he interrupted me, he says, well, well, all of us serve missions. Oh, no. And oh, dude, gosh. I no, became I incensed. No. Dude, I was like, don't you tell me <laughs> your girls camp where you went and <laughs> dug one trench for one silly little sauna <laughs> on a border town where you got to cruise back to the hotel with air conditioning once things got hot. Don't you dare say that mission trip, all right, compares to my two years serving in a socialist country when the war in Iraq started and I had guns pulled on me. I was robbed. You have no freaking idea. You And, and, you're, and this just shows how beta these are because the only thing Mike. that he knows how to freaking say is a mission trip. mission trip. It's not a trip, pal. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, dude. This is so. Oh man. Okay, so be before Woo! before okay. we continue and, uh, to attack for, Mike Winger, the for people who are coming good, in a here, a good ramp up start for, to the a good gradual for the people start. Who are coming in here. Harden saying Harden's not saying that. Mike Winger said this is a mission trip. It doesn't matter. He said it's He's a mission trip. He's just going on a rant for entertainment <laughs> okay. purposes. I'm, I'm, no, I have, okay. to be, I have to be the reasonable guy here for a minute. Oh, Whoa, mission wait. Trip. Quake who is going to be the reasonable guy? Mission the trip Twilight Zone. Is, the, is the colloquial that evangelicals use because that's what they call it. So he called it a mission trip because that's how they always phrase it. He isn't that familiar with <gasps> Oh, it's just your medical degree paper. It's just your medical degree photocopy. <laughs> okay. Or maybe you went to med school for eight years and it's not just a life coach certificate that you bought online. Okay, all right, okay. okay. Carden had some Carden, Carden had some Red Bulls before this, guys. So <laughs> but I do want to say one thing I've noticed though, um there's there's really like three evangelical ways of communication. There's the um uh for females. The uh, incorrect way. No, no, no. Um, the anti-Mormon way. As someone who and studied, the anti-Catholic way. No, 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 no. You're completely missing. It. As someone who studied mass communication, um, at BYU, I've picked this up. It's very interesting. Uh, what's her name? She's super beautiful. She's very popular evangelical girl. Oh, one I, of the Duck oh, Dynasty no. daughters. What's her name? The Sadie. Uh, 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 oh, Robertson. Sadie Robertson. There's the Christian girl talk where, when they talk about Jesus, and then. They get really, really passionate, and then they go down to make sure you understand. There's that. Yeah. But then there's the Jackie Hill Perry, which he is doing. <laughs> Jackie Hill Perry, slow, she's a she's a big Christian, and her uh, her husband's like Preston Perry or Peyton Perry, one of his names. This is another evangelical way of speaking, where your arms and your hands slowly go from one side of the screen to the other. So you'll notice the mission trip he's talking about the missionaries will go and they'll indoctrinate each other, but then they're paid at the end of the day to clean up the mess. And they do this weird conducting from one side of the screen to the other. Play it back. You'll see he does it. This is a very effective tool evangelicals use. It's a for I'm not kidding. It is a form of hypnosis. Evangelicals, <laughs> I am not kidding you. I have seen it over and over in Texas. Play it back. They go okay. from one side of the screen with their hands to the other. Play it back. Okay, are we we'll going to get I don't want to get hypnotized. Are we about to get hypnotized? The Perrys do this like nobody's business. Okay, here it goes. <laughs> Environment of a mission trip is such that while they're going door to door, when they leave, they head over to the home. Of, of missionary supporters. These people are paid by the church to help <laughs> these individuals. And I have no idea what he's like doing. Clean up. Uh, <laughs> you'll notice the hands go everywhere. Yeah, he's sitting right up against his microphone. This is not a natural kind of, position. It is a real thing evangelicals do. I study <laughs> okay. these people. Well, look, we're, we're going to be them. fair. I, I do. I do the same thing. 
My wife always laughs at me when I start talking with my hands too much. Well, Luke the thing is, yeah, is one of them. we're not debunking <sighs> his hand tropes. We're debunking the no. lies that he is saying. But I said that, that he to show that the made up how the missions go. I said that to show that the culture of evangelicalism, though, is what's shining through here. And that is what's corrupting his understanding of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Because he's not looking at Mormonism as Mormonism. He's trying to view it through his suburban Christian evangelical lens. Where everybody and, gets yeah. paid out of priestcraft. Right. It, it shows. It shows who he's preaching to, right? He's preaching to his own. Well, yeah, this is but not. Hold for us, on, just it's stop them. before we analyze his cute culture and all the suburban payouts that they all get. Okay, let's just <laughs> on its face debunk this crap. Yeah. My There's grandma, nothing to even be debunk. Yeah. No. No. no I don't know. Yeah. No, I don't know no, who he's no, referring guys, to. No. No. I'll tell you right now. My grandma, as her dying wish, set aside fifty thousand dollars. So that each one of the grandkids, after interest accrued over a 20-year period, would have a small fund that would offset the cost of our mission because missions are privately funded yep. by the individual families. Yep. Did Back. you pay for your mission as a volunteer, Jonah Barnes? Yes, sir. I paid for my mission as a volunteer, Cardinalis. Luke Hansen, did you pay your, for your mission to Sierra Lejon? Did the church pay you? Did these weirdos that you came home to to get brainwashed? <laughs> After getting just Donkey Konged by the evangelical pastors out there doctrinally every day, did they pay for your mission or did you or your family sacrifice pay for your mission? Uh, my grandparents, my parents, and a little bit of me helping out too. Okay, yeah, that's usually how it goes. <laughs> and we were on our own. Yeah. It's just a bunch of 20 year olds coming in from the heat to no air conditioning. And going to bed. Yeah, now think about this. No, These are, no and meanwhile, you've to got... Going members to get indoctrinated. Okay, I'm putting this to bed here. Meanwhile, you've got this guy who's representing himself as an authority, who constantly brags in all of his videos about the amount of hours that he spends studying for this, is saying that not only... Is it basically not paid for by us, but the church is fronting the cash to have people brainwash... All of the true doctrine we accidentally learned out in the mission field from all the evangelicals we seem but, to be bumping geez. into. Do we know what he's trying to refer to? I don't know what he's... I, I mean, have no some, clue. Sometimes sometimes people will have the missionaries stay at their place instead of the missionaries having an apartment. Do they get paid for that? I, I tried to look around and see if they get paid to do in that. Or rural Mexico, I'd imagine it's volunteer with it, a small stipend. In, in rural but. Mexico, in rural Mexico, oftentimes missionaries will stay in ranchitos and there will be maybe seven or eight of them and there might be a church paid house cleaner that makes sure the laundry is done and makes sure that uh, some of the basic meal prep is accomplished because when missionaries are paying other restaurants and things like to do that, it's oftentimes more cost effective to have some of those basic uh, physical necessities paid for by uh, uh, by it, almost like a housekeeper, a doña, shall we say. So, But this is garbage. Is like, it like, does he mean like... I mean, I've brought mi- I've bought missionaries dinner before. Like, hey, I'll buy you guys some dinner. We'll get burgers and we'll like talk about how it's going. Yeah, maybe he's is talking he- about the meals that well, they'll have at members' houses. I mean, it's, the it's, fact we're doing this shows how <laughs> pathetic his authority is. <laughs> is he confl- I think he's conflating mission presidents and then just members buying Elder Johnson and Elder Either Scott way, some food. He's clueless. <laughs> yes, that's the moral he's of the story. Clueless. Yep. Okay, look, let's keep going. I, I'm sorry. Mike Winger, <laughs> so, this... Oh. I think he's coming... I think he thinks he's doing the right thing here, but he clearly is not as prepped as the people watching this video. What, what is he it doing? Would be okay. led to believe by his claims. Well, here is clip number six. We, we got to move this along. I'm sorry. I am just incensed. I know. Oh, your mission <laughs> trip. we got to go. Mike oh, no. Winger, what is the dirtiest no. thing you did on your mission, bro? I've been knee deep, elbow deep in sewage because a two liter Coke bottle plugged the entire freaking uh, 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 sewage backup of a city block and I was the only six foot five seven foot two arm span guy that could get my hand underneath there to pull it out if you do not love the people you will not wade knee deep through their sewage to unblock the black water that's getting all the stupid kids sick because it's overflowing into the drinking water and cistern uh, you did not do that on your stupid mission trip with air conditioning and multiple bible translations videos to watch on your DVD player afterwards, Mike Winger. 
Oh my gosh, my mission trip. Whoo! I am so not Christ-like right now. I am so just like well, he hit a Old nerve. Testament right now. He, he <laughs> hit a nerve. I've heard that mission trip thing before. That is not, do not compare those. That is not Dude. the same thing. Oh, Don't man. do it, okay. Mike. <laughs> Here, oh, let's see what he has so, to say so about that, that was a little rant that was an aside from us talking about the fact that Mike Winger made something completely up. So just people who are watching this, just like, <laughs> yeah, stay focused. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Luke is like, What's okay. What's going on? Here? All right, everybody. Like, Here's okay. clip Calm six. Down. Here's clip six of Mike Winger making making up crap about Mormonism, <laughs> go. <laughs> if, you're, if you're not only a Mormon, but you're basically a really good Mormon, after you die, you get to start on a path of eternal progression of becoming better and better and better until you become a God. And then in heaven, you make tons of babies. And when you have enough <laughs> babies made in heaven, you create, a, you take a planet, form a planet, oh my and then <sighs> you send your babies down to right. live pause, pause, human pause. lives and continue oh. the same cycle that's going on. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. We're paused. Wow. We're paused. <laughs> hey, congratulations, Mike Winger. You watched the God Makers. You watched the God Makers, yep. Cartoon. <laughs> um, he seems this to know a lot more about exaltation than we do. Like, I don't know, wh like, what scriptures are you reading, Mike? I'm not... I'm just here in Doctrine and Covenant 76, and it says the people who go to the celestial kingdom receive the testimony of Jesus, believed on his name, that by keeping the commandments they made me washed and clean, they overcame by faith, and wherefore, as, as it is written, they are gods, even the sons of God. I, I'm, not, I'm not seeing the collab or the infinite babies or the yeah. populating a planet. They th I mean, or, does he think we? That does on, he think we talk about this? All? Do you think that's like half of Come Follow Me? Like they think that we like really believe this. That also, we talk about this wouldn't all the time. we be a more sexy, less frumpy people if we did believe in eternal sex like that? Like, don't you think? <laughs> Come on! Look, I thought about this. Look, Mike Winger, you're recycling <laughs> evangelical tropes that find new life every three years in your divinity school textbooks about witnessing to Mormons <laughs> that aren't based in reality. I've thought about this much as a lifetime member. This isn't some kind of gnosis. This isn't some secret doctrine. I think what these people are getting at is a cruel misinterpretation of the concept of eternal progression, which they themselves believe in. Because if you die and you go to heaven, you realize, wow, heaven is real. The minute you recognize what the eternities are and that heaven is real, you've progressed in your knowledge of God. And with an infinite amount of time after this mortal probation, to progress, there will probably be infinite progression. And if we have the anthropomorphic God model, which I realize is a little bit controversial, some uh, faiths believe Jesus Christ actually had a corporal body, a tabernacle of clay. Others think he was pure spirit. But either way, there's scripture that supports, bo supports both within Christendom. If you take it to its logical conclusion and there is infinite progress, yes, there's infinite possibilities. <clears throat> and I guess you could say new planet this new nebula this but there's nowhere in the book of mormon yep. or scripture that it says if you yeah. reach to the celestial kingdom you get your own planet would you like it bubble wrapped or would you like it in the expensive vacuum formed <laughs> packaging yeah. Yeah. like this is a lie that grifters who make money off of youth conferences dare i say mission trips you know what i'm <laughs> saying keep repeating be oh my god so, yeah okay so two thing so yeah, number we're, one we're gonna talk about we're gonna we have another clip our next clip is about forever families so we can kind of dig into that aspect of it well, a little more okay before we get into that just a couple things like like first of all don't take issue with our answers when you don't give any okay when when protestants are like oh yeah and then you just go to heaven and then period full stop and the book's over and you're like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute what is it where is it what do we do when do we do it like just because you don't like our answers you, you can't criticize them unless you give some kind of an answer and they have no idea. They have no idea what you do in heaven, what you do. Eternal progression doesn't make any sense to them. They're just like, oh, we don't need to know that. It's not important. It's not essential to our salvation. Just because you don't like our answers, okay? You need to offer something before you criticize ours. And you know what, Mike Winger? Post-physique, bro. Seriously. Post-physique. Do you know what post-physique means? It means show how in shape you are. Okay. In the old days, when internet dating was new... When guys wanted to see what a girl looked like, they'd say post physique, right? And it's a taboo thing you shouldn't say, but it was recycled later on in Twitter when somebody had a bad argument that was super woke and dumb. People would just say post physique because as a joke, it always ends up being a blue haired feminist that makes these really bad takes, right? Well, here's what I want to see. Mike Winger, 
post the service you have engaged in to your fellow children of God unpaid. Oh. And see if it stacks up. Ooh, to ooh. just the hosts that you have ooh. in this studio right here. Because we paid our way. <laughs> we gave into the system. We didn't suck money from the believers. We gave no, money into okay. the believer system and served those people on our dime. So until you can come up with two years of service of mine in Argentina, two years of service in his in Russia, two years of service at Luke's in Sierra Leone, and countless service projects for our convert friend here, Kwaku, that were done unpaid, I doubt, I doubt you can come up with 10% the amount of service on your mission trips that was unpaid as you can with what we just did when we were 19 year olds. So anyway, All I'm right, sorry. So <laughs> we, we didn't keep the, Woo! don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing part of the commandment very well there. Okay. <laughs> but, well, here's, well, here's, and here's the rest the thing. of the clip. Mike has, Mike has made a couple of videos where he's like, ah, oh, you know, people, they just say heaven is about sitting on clouds playing harps, but that's not what it's about. That's a silly thing that people say to kind of make it seem hokey. Yes, Mike. And you just did the same exact thing here. So please don't use the kind of argumentation you yes. don't like people to throw at you against other people. Yes. And that's why Trent Horn, who we're going to look at later, is such a great apologist. And this is what he atheists do that. And this is what atheists do to believers. Yeah. Ooh, and Trent sky, Horn has this thing and he calls it daddy. when Protestants argue like atheists. Yeah, and yeah. He and he just did it to us. That they'll do sometimes. Yeah, and he yeah. just did it to us. Oh, your sky daddy sent his son. Do we son have to finish blah, this blah, blah. clip? Let's finish the clip. So here, we're finishing yeah, it. So let's we finish don't. it. We're There's not one more point that's brought up that we need to address here. That That's actually a good point. Okay. I think. Yeah, because he's your boy. I know, because, you know, <laughs> this guy's your boy and you still want to make, you know. Just try to do benefit of the doubt. It's hard sometimes, okay. but just yeah. try to do it. Jeez. I'm on the earth. So you become the, the same as God. Uh, you become a God. Yeah. So yeah, now, that, that came from Satan originally, right? Satan in the garden was like, you'll be his God, right? And, and Oh, like pause. Kind of what a, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Call, I'm calling it. I'm calling it. <laughs> First, <sighs> for the evangelicals watching, when they hear that, because remember, to them, God is, is Trinity. Yep. So, w first, we don't believe we're coming triune spirits. Mm. Second, they always go to this. Well... Satan said you shall be as gods knowing good and evil. So this, the Mormons believe the lie of Satan. What did God say right after exactly. that? Exactly. Behold, man has become as one of us yes. now. And by the yes. way, before you want to start saying snarkily that, oh, your doctrine was invented by Satan, come at me with a doctrine other than the Trinity that doesn't show up in scripture. The word is nowhere to be found. And then explain to me Sola Scriptura, the other creed that does not show up in scripture. And then explain to me all the other creeds everywhere from the Athanasian to the Nicene Creed, which you guys come at us for not believing in why don't you defend all of these other man-made dare i say possibly devil made because it wasn't made by god where else it could have come from you know don't come at me saying we believe in devil doctrine when you're here defending nothing but the creeds of men because so far nothing you've come at it with at, at us with is scriptural it's all creedal. Well, here's the issue. Yeah, so and so let's let's do some scripture context because Jeff, I'm sorry, Jeff, I was looking at Apologia before this. Uh, oh, Mike <laughs> is saying he's always talking about context. That's kind of like his tagline. Is, they let's don't look know at the, the lie in the so garden. Let's look at the context. Satan yeah. has a number of of things that he said to people. He had um, the three temptations of Christ. What were they? Eat bread. Eat food. Turn it into food and eat it. Is Jesus Christ turning stuff into food bad? No. Is Jesus Christ eating food bad? No. So Satan's not telling them to do something wrong. He's just telling them to do something in the wrong way. Wrong the method. same thing with throwing yourself off. Will the angels actually not catch him? Or will Jesus Christ not actually be saved by Heavenly Father in certain situations throughout his life? No, that's not correct. Satan's not, that part's not bad. It's the way that Satan is telling him to do it, the tempting God part that's bad. Yeah. Then saying, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Good. Jesus Christ is going to get them all. The fact that Jesus Christ is getting them or that Satan's telling him that isn't bad. It's the way he goes about it. So Satan's saying, you Good shall point. be as gods. That's not the bad part. Satan's just saying it, do it my way. The bad do it method. by rejecting God. Yeah, do it the wrong yeah, way. The I'm the method. one giving you this. And, and That's and, the bad part. And it follows the same pattern that Satan's used before. So, so, But what's interesting about this is, and I've spent a lot of time with in Protestant churches and stuff, they will not touch this. 
they will not touch it. And because the minute you touch it, you go, wait, what's that mean? What does it mean in John 17 when Jesus says that the apostles are one with him as he is one with the Father? What does that mean that ye shall judge angels? What does that mean that we will sit on the throne with Christ as Christ sits on the throne with the Father? Because Mike Winger's saying none of this, none of this happens. Oh, it's from there, the devil. There is no, it's all evil. Yeah. But I'm going to the Bible, the one he believes in. Heaven forbid our father in heaven act like a father and wants to treat, uh, teach his children the craft of being and that's a why, god. I mean, I hate to <laughs> be a jerk about this, but ultimately this is what this correlated Protestantism brings you. It brings you nothing but control. They don't want followers in their Christian concerts, in their pews, thinking, hmm, what is my eternal destiny? They want people thinking, how do I stay in line with the correlated Christianity? How do we keep them listening to the podcast, buying the merch, going to the camps, and doing exactly what they tell them? This is no different than all of the dogma of the woke scolds and the progressive social left right now. Just with a different weird suburban rule book. Well, here's the other thing. It's weird. It's dying. Evangelicalism is dying. Every, why all the freaking evangelical YouTube channels where the pastors who studied for whatever how many years to get their degree, you they they're only known for what they're against. Mm. And the only evangelicals that are actually known for what they're for are the mega pastors who are who are, you know, trying and they're getting yeah. dunked on by these guys. There's 900 little Christian YouTube Guys who have never been cool before in their life ever who finally found a fan base by dogging on other people, but they have nothing to bring to the table. They can only criticize. So I, I think one of the drivers of this is the profit incentive, is that Mike Winger and these guys, they can't afford to offend anyone by standing for things. So all they can do is point to all these outside groups and say, they're all bad. Trust me, I interpret the Bible correctly and give me your And money. ironically, Satan's name is the accuser. And that's all they do. Yeah. It's because yeah. I think it's because of the moolah. Uh -huh. And by the way, Mike Winger, bud, got to read your Bible. Brother, just read your Bible, okay? Psalm 82, you are gods. John 10, 34, Christ quotes it, right? Genesis 3, 22, okay? The doctrine of Even apotheosis. Michael Heiser comes out and is like, or Heisner, I can't remember how pronounced it. Yeah, Heiser, his last Heiser. Name. He yeah. unfortunately just passed away, but even he said, look, evangelicals have to contend with this. Like, Read your Bible, man. Yeah, there is no getting out of it conveniently just because you don't like to think about the eternities. And evangelicals, if you're watching this and you're Mike Winger fans, look, he's probably a good dude. He's not reading his Bible. Well, this yeah, and we'll save Bible. a spot for you next to your little propane fueled campfire on the beach <laughs> outside of your air-conditioned beach house on your mission trip <laughs> you know what i'm saying oh my gosh let's let him finish this clip i, I, I yeah i got incensed about that one but here we go oh why yeah but you can kind of see like why like if you're you know like in the end times like people will be lovers themselves and love like it's all about me so you can kind of see where someone's yeah. like hey I, I'm going to do a lot because I want to be my own God of my own world. Like that, Ooh. that's appealing to some people, I would assume. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. What? This is the funny part. This is the funny part oh, because geez. in the previous clip, he's saying, yeah, they don't even know a lot of this doctrine. And that's kind of like one of the mantras. It's like, oh, the people in Mormonism don't know their own doctrine. They don't want to tell them it. They want to hide it from them. And then right <laughs> after that, sometimes they'll say, yeah. And the only reason people join is because they pridefully want to become like God and get their own world. It's like, hold yeah. on. Are they not telling the people this is because because they're embarrassed to say it? Or is this the only reason people join? You've got to pick a lane here, it, people. It, oh it's my like gosh. when have both at the same time. When you confront confront Turks about the Armenian genocide, it didn't happen, <laughs> but also they deserved it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, which one? Every single time you get both answers. Or a Lynn Wilder, right? Um, when I didn't know that the first part said that Jesus was the word we were never taught anything deep in mormonism i didn't but know then that i heard I brigham young already earned his exaltation there is no way <laughs> you were taught <laughs> you uh, 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 two two weeks after your baptism that brigham young has been exalted a phrase i have never heard at the pulpit yeah. but you weren't taught jesus is the word they're picking stuff up and they're creating this caricature of what they want us to be because that version of us is easier to beat but because and it contradicts itself but we're beating yeah. them. In real life, we're beating them. So they have to create the fake version. And they're getting their people nod along going, yeah, wow, 
this is easy to beat, right, guys? Right? Yes, yes. Please tell yes. us we're winning. We're, no. You're getting beat by everyone. Catholics are beating you. And by the way, Uh, uh, it's uh, been uh, that way for 200 years nearly. All of these tropes that were first written in 1938 and Mormonism unveiled uh and then recycled by Howe and then recycled by the Godmakers and then recycled by Lynn Wilder and then recycled in the early 2000s and then recycled now by Mike Winger. They all date back to the same rushed arguments that the the, the Protestants were throwing together because holy crap, we just lost seven congregations in Illinois to these Mormons. Uh, Quick, quick, quick. You know what it is? What, oh, no, what do we tell no, our congregants? This is a perfect segue. Cardin, this is a perfect segue. He's going to try to cobble together an argument in this next clip that falls apart as he's trying to make it about forever families. Before you say that, last thing I want to say is the, they're they're getting beat by everyone. They're getting beat by J-Dubs, by us, by Roman Catholics, by the New Age community. Evangelicals are getting beat by everyone. Oh. All because they these other churches are cooking food. They're just rearranging it on the plate. Huh. They they can't they bring there. anything to the table. Yeah. And so they just have these people with their degrees talking how smart they are. It it isn't working. <laughs> they're they're divine. They divine divinity. I, I read this entire cookbook I'm, and I know that if we add this many milligrams of Bro, turn on the oven. Yeah, I just in the something. time you made describing this, Create I made something. dinner. They can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Um, eternal families. Eternal families. Mike Winger debunks eternal families. Oh, when we went there to see the temple, um, they they made us sit down. By the way, what are those air quotes, lady? What's the, we went there to see that oh, temple. Yeah. Where's your temple, evangelicals? <laughs> like when I go to a Hindu temple, I don't disrespect it. I recognize, oh, wow, these people sacrificed a lot to put their religious beliefs into practice. And now there's this big temple. Not my style architecture, but I recognize that it's beautiful and it's great and it's a massive sacrifice. What's your temple? A stupid amphitheater mega church with blowout speakers? And a fire hose for baptisms? Like, what? yeah, where's your temple? Okay, let's keep going. I'm going to watch a video first. And it was all a video on, do you want to see your family? Do you want to see your children? Do you want to, because in order to, to be together, like forever an eternity to be this forever family, then you need to join our church. If you're just going to be, believe whatever promises you the most, then why stop there? <laughs> why not say, if you want to have beautiful skin and, and an attractive figure in the afterlife. Then come okay, to- I'm sorry, but All I just right, have so. to say this. Hold on. M- Mormon chicks are hotter than evangelical okay, chicks. Cut, All right, cut, I mean, cut, True. Cut it out. No, you know, no. we made everybody it so knows far. the Mormon chicks are hotter. We made it so <laughs> far. <laughs> I feel we made it about so far, far without our women are hotter than your women. Well, we don't. All needs to be said. My it's true. dad can beat I, up your dad. I don't know. Cart first. <laughs> I just want to say, have you? The Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders are probably all evangelical, and they are some of the most beautiful women in the country. No, so no, let's, be, prob- fair. Right. It it so. let's be fair. Let's be fair. Sadie is. Robertson is is a beautiful. <laughs> Oh my for, goodness! For the sake of time, they're okay. The Dallas cheerleaders not recycling all of these bogus lies from 1870, like homeboy here. All right, and they're probably far more respectful of other people's faiths. So look, no, you know, let's do a split screen: the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders and the women's section right. of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 the BYU yeah. Cougarettes and the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders are more fair. Yeah, yeah, the right. Cougarettes are gorgeous. Mop the floor. Cougarettes Mop are gorgeous. the floor. However, okay. I don't know if uh, our, I feel like our arguments <laughs> get demeaned when we say, <laughs> yeah, but guess what? Our chicks have bigger boobs than yours. It I, I didn't say not, that was it. I, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> attraction is, is proportional, not exaggerated. This is so. why Luke at the beginning was like, all right, everybody. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you're yes. going to hear some stuff. <laughs> He's like, I'm hedging here. <laughs> this is really hard. Uh, <laughs> Mike, I want you to like me. Mike, I'm different than I, them. No. <laughs> Just, no. Okay, well, let's finish here. But what do you ask? Notice how I'm not getting mad at Carden for saying that I'm like try to get in with Mike Winger or anything. Uh, Luke is the conscience. The entertainment part. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's just entertainment. Okay, so but well, let's take it back. Let's take it back. Well, there's more to, to the there's still and all that. So first, Mike Winger is saying, okay, you could just say whatever you want to make it sound as good as possible. It's like, wouldn't you want to have a good theology? Like, isn't <laughs> like isn't going to heaven and being one with God in the sense that evangelicals think about it? 
a selling point, like why their religion. Well, so wait a minute. What so about telling people starting with about, like, a, oh, you could just say good things to people and it makes them join. And that's not good. Well, uh, what, about, what about just telling people you have a good theology? What about just telling people you don't have to do any work ever? Come to my church once. Give me some money and you're done forever. How about that theology, Mike Winger? Because that's evangelicism. It's just like, oh, say Jesus's name and dance to a song, throw some money on the plate, and you're done forever and ever. You're constantly criticizing so, us yeah. for doing works, for keeping covenants, for being righteous. And being a high-demand religion. For being a high-demand religion, and now you're like, oh, they just want to make it look so attractive. Which, it's by the marketing. way, what's hilarious is our high-demand religion is only doing just the basics of going to church on Sunday and maybe one Bible study during the week and occasionally volunteering to clean the chapel like once a month like evangelicals used to do in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> like, like all, all we really do is maintain the same probably 10-hour-a-week schedule that every evangelical did from 1945 to 1995, yet now all of a sudden we're the high demanders. You know? Mm. this. Okay, so we'll finish this clip as he's trying okay, to yeah. dunk on... So let's see what he does with eternal families. Being with your, He started off with promising them the world is bad. And now let's see how this argument I hope his wife isn't going. listening to this thinking just like, yeah, that's a good pitch, honey. W wouldn't you like yeah. to be yeah. with me for longer? You know, like, I mean, ma maybe we can mock something else other than the so thing you... that makes it sound like you like your marriage long yeah. enough to want it to continue after death. You well, know, like, just... awkward. Oh, no. he, he's going to make this point. This is the funny thing about the clip. OK, here we go. Then uh, uh, eternal families being mocked by a man who's supposedly supposed to have a Look at deep, that face uh, Look at that sincerely face. held in my church. Like I can just make up whatever I want. Whoever offers the most, I'll be that religion. So wait, no, whoever offers the most, you won't be that religion, but you'll be their pastor. <laughs> You'll be their pastor, that's for sure. Wait, offers okay, the most what? Money? <laughs> okay, but, okay, let's get scriptural here, though. If they don't believe in eternal marriage, then why were Adam and Eve married before the fall? Here we go. True well, that. I mean, if that, that's the natural state of grace to lead you to be married eternally. That's Let true. me make you a wife. It is not good for man to be alone. No, you and your wife are married. Please don't fall. But planets! But planets! <laughs> but Does he planet! believe that, planets! I mean, the literal first thing God says about Adam is, oh, it's not good for man to be alone. Yes. And he thinks, well, actually, it is good for man to be alone forever. Well, and just because you don't like, just, you don't have an answer, Mike. Don't criticize our answers if you don't like. He don't does have this an is, answer. This is broken no, divorce dad does. theology. Watch what he does in the rest of the clip. <laughs> This is, uh, Wait, you my ex-wife sucks. I don't want to be with her friend. This is broken divorce dad theology. <laughs> you got That's mad exactly at me for saying that Mormon chicks are hotter, and then you come out and say this is broken divorce dad theology? <laughs> it is. <laughs> All it is. right, okay. dog. And they are. <laughs> it just, I'm it, sorry. I, like, okay, not everybody women in this video agrees with the extremity to which some of these arguments are taken. I will forever lean into the meme. No, so anyway, okay, here we go. Let's see, see what that's it, the thing. Let's see what they have to say. Oh, but but there's more to it than this. Actually, the phrase families are forever is is always leveraged in Mormonism. They leverage it a lot. It's they the reason why they leverage it is because they found it effective, right? No, no, you that's like saying John 316. Oh my gosh. The heart of the gospel is always leveraged in Christianity. These people can't go to a freaking baseball stadium without putting up some kind of so 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 God so loved the world that he sent his his son Jesus Christ because they love of this Jesus guy, the Christians do. So they're always leveraging the fact that this Christian died for them on the cross. Why? Because it works. It, it's yeah. a, it, <laughs> because it, it works. Yeah, yeah. It's like when you see, it, it's like calling a nice gesture a tactic. Yes. You've yes. immediately it's so Or cynical. maybe oh, yeah. it's, it's a so centerpiece cynical. of our theology. Maybe evangelicals are super enthusiastic of the centerpiece of their theology, so enthusiastic that they'll put it on a sign and say John 316. By the way, guess what? We got the John 316 signs at the BYU Stadium when we have our football games too, because it's the heart of our gospel as well. The only thing is we have a couple more details than you do, Mike, that we're enthusiastic about them. And one of them is that Christ's sacrifice and the restoration of the gospel um, makes it so the families can be forever instead of the mistaken interpretation of being saved separated after death do us Wait, no. part mike is about to make the claim that they have families to be together forever and it's even better than ours oh oh Just roll well. the clip. oh okay strange yeah. angle to take okay so well, well here we go uh, uh what's 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 gonna mike 
Mike, not Mike the Spike, Mike the Little Liar, Mike the, <laughs> like, what are we going to call he him? He does like, kind of look like he, he was a keyboardist in Mike an indie the, band in the early 2000s. No, <laughs> the other two. he does. Oh, I figured it out. I know who he looks like. Who? What? Okay, who? give me one second. I got to get the Google image He looks here. like the guy that was always telling the teacher on whatever we like were doing at recess. Like if we actually played <laughs> tackle football and you weren't allowed to play tackle football, it was always a kid that He's looked like guy. this. They're they out would, there playing tackle they're football. They're out there playing tackle football. Just they're, wanted you to They're know. saying families are forever, Can I just man. say though, uh, I had no idea that the leader, the lead singer of Hello Goodbye uh, became a, 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 a Christian uh, apologist. Uh. <laughs> Dude, look at him. Oh, my god! He looks exactly like the lead singer of Hello Goodbye. Switch. Yeah, right. Oh, oh that's beard. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, that is pretty hilarious. Put that up one more time, my man. Put that up one more time. Let's okay, let the, it focus. Uh, Put it in front of your face. Oh, no, we got he a different He kind of looks thing. like a Pixar movie depiction of Mike Winger. Oh, Mike wow, Winger look looks at that. Like look at that. Happy. Okay. I'm so good at this. On this show, I have compared, <laughs> I think, every Christian apologist to their celebrity look. Well, that was our first real true ad hominem. Yes. You know, which I really appreciate. Hey, that one Hello <laughs> Goodbye song is really good, though. What is it? The uh, in Here in Your Arms? It's a good one. I've, ne I've never been able it's to shake one. the uh, Burger King guy. Every time I hear somebody say Jeff, Jeff Durbin, I'm always like, like don't basket. you mean the Burger King guy? I don't know why anyone calls him Jeff anymore, because he's clearly the Burger King <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Okay, so anyway... Um, we got to have our Trump diminutive. We, yeah, we got just forever. We got Lion Mike Winger this, here. Guys. We got Lion Mike Winger here. You know, let's see what Lion Mike's got to say. Right. But families aren't really forever in Mormonism. If you're Mormon and you're a good Mormon, you go to the top kingdom. Oh boy. But bad Mormons, they go to the next kingdom down. You don't live together. What is if this? You do happen to be up in the celestial kingdom and you do progress and become a god. You end up having to leave go start your own planet and guess what your family is not forever um, yeah now now on the christian faith if your family's in christ you're all forever together forever like that's it that's the whole deal Every well let's just like <laughs> no let's do a basic question what about benito mussolini or adolf hitler's sister does the salvation of adolf hitler's nice and a well-behaved sister guarantee his salvation. Well, notice what he said because well, he he's he agreed with he us. He can let him finish to kind of explain that out a little more, but oh, because okay, okay yeah, finish finish then because uh, okay, I let the, oh, oh, well that was oh it wasn't the end of the club. I apologize. That's on me. I ended up sorry. It ended up uh, stopping too early. Let's see what he has to say. Once together forever. Who's in Christ? If you're not in Christ, you're not part of that eternal family, and that's right. There is separation there. But that's the that's also what? true I, in Mormonism. I, I, it's just even more wait, wait. segregated. Actually. Wow! There we go. Wow! Oh, wait, 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 so wait, 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 We we have eternal families, but we're better because theirs is more segregated. But ours is segregated. You know, in their but religion, if you're same. atheist, if you're an atheist sister who's a little woke, dies, she's just going to hell. But in Mormonism, it's more segregated because she goes to the telestial. So his where she accusation. Gets to glory. Wait. Woo. <laughs> so this guy's accusation is Mormons bad. Because they believe that there's names to the kingdoms after judgment that you are <laughs> segregated into after judgment. Whereas our evangelical theocracy has no names for how we divide you. So well, here's boom. The thing. Actually, after. even even Ugh. evangelicalism is actually more Christian than Jesus because Jesus makes a fallacy of saying my father's house has many mansions, but in Christ, we're all one mansion. Uh -huh. And, and, and so, so really, I mean, we're better than Jesus when, I mean, that's the same argument. By the way, can we <laughs> just say that the dude that doesn't think the black Ethiopian Jews could have crossed the ocean into the ancient Americas <laughs> sh probably shouldn't be using the word segregated. Like I, I just, I, I just think these guys, whenever they try and come okay. after the and book see, of that's Mormon, a, that's a logical fallacy. Right you know, there. When, 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 <laughs> that's not a logical Winger, fallacy. That's right. When, no, Whenever they try and come after the Book of Mormon on 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 bad archaeological archaeological grounds, it always descends into this idea that no, no, those dark people from that dark area over there could not have come because they didn't have the technology. We're let's or not. It always descends into bigoted, modernist, racist garbage. <laughs> you know, well, well, 
I will okay. say about but let's just let's just look at what he did here. He's like, oh, they say forever families. You could just say whatever you want to get people to come in. By the way, we're the real ones that have forever families. It's like, well, he, yes, he says, yes. like, it's bad that they're saying this. And then it's the one that said, oh, we actually believe this. Like, you got to pick, lane, Mike. He, gotta he, pick he, a lane. He did two things that were silly. The first one is that he he said, uh, you know, families aren't really forever because unless you're, you know, unless you have the, the, the right belief, you're not going to be with them. We're different because because we're all together unless you don't have the right belief. So so he <laughs> agrees with us. Yeah. But second, he described it as well, if for, it's like like we're he he described ufology. He said because you'll have to go to a different planet and start your family. We're not in different planets all over the universe. First, they're kingdoms of glory, and what does Christ say? The kingdom of God is within. This is a a level of exaltation. There is nowhere in the scriptures. Where it says, I have compartmentalized thee unto yes. Orion's belt and unto the Pleiades yes. star system. And that's not <laughs> yeah. a thing. I can't, it's not in scriptures. And believe me, I've looked for it. So yeah. it's not there. It's talking about personal exaltations, levels of glory, aka the ones who can actually judge angels, the ones who are sitting on the throne with the Father. What he is, he is describing a cartoon, a yes. Looney Tunes version of our yes. religion and trying to attack it. And even when describing the Looney Tunes version, he ends up agreeing with that version yeah. <laughs> when he's communicating to his people. It is truly a wild, wonder. wild. So can, can you just, I know he's your boy and you don't want to offend him because you're hoping it'll invite <laughs> you on your show, uh, Luke, but true or not true, he's got the same snark as a freshman atheist that just came back to from college having read his first richard dawkins book yeah kind of yeah well, okay let's let's put it this way i don't want to i, I want said to true or not true i don't so want nuance hard. i want binaries true or not true Pick a side, no, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna try to put this in a way that will be appealing to you i want to push him up against the wall so hard that i don't want to give him the out of saying well, they didn't give me benefit of the doubt or they're attributing bad motive to me. So that's why I don't have to engage with them. I went to confront him with the cold, hard facts. So he's pressed up against the wall and he has no way to get out or all the other people on here that are wa hate watching this that are going to try to take those same outs. OK, how's that? Is that all a right. good that, is that a good fair? That, that was good. That's the most aggressive I've ever seen you. It's kind of refreshing. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> but it so was like halfway <laughs> against you and halfway against him. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to go to clip number eight now, Salvation for the Dead. Oh, heaven forbid he oh, follows the Apostle oh Paul my gosh, don't and the this. multiple scriptures that talk about the multiple degrees of glory, the harrowing of hell, and and and, and oh, baptism boy. for our ancestors who have passed. Wow, yeah, I have a feeling this is going to be a real banger. Let's see what he's got to say. Let's just say, and then in their th thought process, the person's dead, mm -hmm. so... He he still has a chance to become a Mormon after you're dead. Like, does yeah. someone witness to him, or what is that? Even, like, is that what happens? I don't know. Yeah, missionary supposedly will go to you at one of your lower levels, you know, of uh, okay. of existence, and then you can become, and you know, and then eventually you can work your way up to go to not the highest level because it's you already burnt that bridge, but you can go to one of the levels of heaven uh, that's higher <sighs> than where you're at. But there are some people that are end up being disqualified, and that's basically people like me who really know Mormon theology. No, 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 no! Oh boy! I don't know if he knows about the spirit world. Oh my gosh! Oh, In the same my breath. Gosh. This this guy this guy he will never be a son of perdition because he clearly does not have a perfect knowledge of the gospel. Jeez. Oh my gosh, that was so oh, royal. Geez. I am Wait, writing did we miss, this down. Did we missed the part where he said Mormons who apostatize are and him are the only ones that go down. He says that somewhere. I yeah. am, this is the intro. People like me that know so much about oh, Mormon gosh. religion. Oh. Meanwhile, four active missionaries, return missionaries are trying to figure out what he was talking about for the first 10 minutes of this video. No, that, that Let's watch that one again so fast. This was so us. glorious. Oh my gosh, here we go, Mike Winger. Being disqualified, and that's basically people like me who really know Mormon theology oh, and openly preach against it, or Mormons who've apostatized, who've left the faith. So to me, it seems more like a selling point for Mormonism. It's like, don't worry, you got dead relatives. We'll take care of them, too. And it's just like an empty oh my promise. Gosh. Do you notice that what it's the guy a, oh. that receives priestcraft money? 
oh, in order to you. speak about faith, who is constantly trying to demean our religion into a Ponzi scheme. Yes. Do you notice that it's only the guy who gets paid to preach the word that talks so much about the salesmanship of the word? Yes. It takes a little bit of cojones for him who literally gets paid to trick you out of reading the Book of Mormon. And by the way, <laughs> yes. what's the accusation here? He says, yeah, well, like people from the higher kingdom, like they come down to the lower people that, you know, didn't behave so well. Kind of like Jesus <laughs> after he was crucified. But that's not true. Though, in the heroine of hell they that's don't, biblical. Though, but they don't read the Bible. They read Mike Winnegar's version of the Bible. Right? No, they take not, his interpretation. Not no. Mike Winnegar. Mike. A winger. That's, it's Leo Winnegar and then Mike Winger. Oh, Mike but, Winging It Winger. Dude, there, yeah. there's Catholic doctrine on this. There's other Christian faiths outside of your amphitheater in Orange County that actually believe this stuff as well, Mike. They're not salesmen. Jeez. They're sincerely held religious okay, beliefs. Okay, I get a question. Who besides bitter boomer moms are actually compelled by the, I can't believe that there is a religion out there that believes that some people in heaven are, are in kind of different areas and have a different uh, degrees of, of, of eternal knowledge than some. And the higher ups would go down and associate Who with cares? those people. Yeah, yeah, why would you care? What's, like, I'm sorry, this is what how bad these guys are hemorrhaging. They're jumping onto anything that, because remember, I, I, mean, I don't know Mike Winger. I don't know what he does for a living. I'm going to assume this is what he does for a living, okay? And he needs the YouTube money, the books, and, and he needs to keep getting hired around the country to speak at these things. To, but but there's no there's no look. He 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 reminds me of a KUTV journalist. And 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 and, and if you look, I'm upset because of this. And the, there's no passion here. He doesn't he doesn't. Yeah. There's nothing here. He's saying what he has to say. You know what I yeah. mean? Like so I'm. I just see dollar bills. That's yeah. all I see yeah. when I hear I'm not this gonna, guy. I'm going to be in the other camp. I'm not going to attribute the motive to, to him about why he does what he's doing. I think he's sincere about a number of things. Luke, why are you recording ah, from a terrorist no manifesto oh. video? Look, oh, no, 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 I'll leave it up. no, because this is what I was trying to say to Cardin. I don't want him to give the out of being able to say, well, I am sincere. Yeah, that's I don't have fair. to listen to you now. That's fair. Let's let's confront him with the actual arguments that he's completely wrong on. That's objectively wrong, and it's, and it's not based on trying to read into his psychology at all. Okay. So he's in the same sentence. He's saying that he has um, enough knowledge about the faith to get sent to Look, outer darkness. I prefer he's he's conflating the kingdoms of glory with the spirit world. Yes, he's saying we're, we're in the kingdoms of glory and people are coming from the celestial down to the terrestrial and trying to bring them up to the telestial by teaching them the gospel. Yeah. Look, like I prefer even, to take clips out of context and to yeah. inflate them into their most reductive binaries and then make sweeping general statements with a broad cloth that make me feel better about myself. I don't know what you're doing yeah. over there. No, I'm just kidding. I'm looking at his nuance. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna keep recording this terrorist uh, video, <laughs> and I'm gonna quote I'm gonna quote uh, from DNC seventy six. So Mike Winger, um, if you don't know, this is the section that talks mm -hmm. about the three degrees of glory. I I'd assume you don't because you didn't seem to quite get what was going well, on. The Bible you does the too. Spirit world with you know but. seventy with the three kingdoms. So here's the description from the scriptures from our scriptures from the added to the Bible part about the the three kingdoms celestial. Who goes there? Received the testimony of Jesus, were baptized, the commandments overcame by faith. Those are direct quotes. Terrestrial, honorable men who were blinded by the craftiness of men, they were not valiant in the testimony of Jesus. That's your second level. Celestial, those are direct quotes still. Received, so the third one now, received not the gospel of Christ, neither did the testimony of Jesus, who deny not the Holy Spirit. That's your third level. So you're looking like the second, and we shouldn't judge people. I think what that means in scriptures is don't assign them to a kingdom before the final judgment. That's like the proper interpretation of that verse. So I'm not going to do that to you, Mike, but you're looking like number two right now. <laughs> if I had to, you know, gun to my head, say something, not outer darkness. What's outer darkness? Denied the Holy Spirit, having crucified Christ unto themselves and put him to open shame. <clears throat> That's not you, Mike. Nobody's saying that. So you're not going to outer darkness. You can rest assured we are not preaching that in our churches. Jeez. Okay, well, here, let's rest assured that he's going to get the other half of this right and see what he has to finish the clip. <laughs> because we all have angst about those of our loved ones who we feel might not know Christ. 
No, we don't. But, That's what. No, I don't. But, guy. Well, he's saying he's saying other people do. So that's our selling. And that we're manipulating them. is it a selling tactic? Okay, is sorry, what he's saying. Sorry. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. By the way, here you are, like, no, I don't. I don't care about my mom. But the, you know? the fact that that sounded like something he would say. Okay, let's go back so we, everybody Boy. can hear it in context, and then we'll let him finish the clip. We all have angst about those of our loved ones who we feel might not know Christ. Yeah. But you can't fix that by just lying about them. Okay. God was working in their lives, calling them, and if they did not receive Him, then there's a real eternal consequence for that. Oh, heaven forbid you have a faith that has some kind of codified second chance for anybody. Uh, yeah, in a faith whose centerpiece is the word yes. atonement. Yes, Jesus Literally, Christ. Jesus Christ's sacrifice for our sins, the massive second chance of humanity. Heaven forbid we talk about second chances scripturally. Mike Winger again, and here's the thing: this is a big, this is a big sticking point for a lot of people. Like people are actually concerned, either for people that they know that don't seem to have actually heard the gospel, or even just their general compassion for humanity. They're like, "Gosh, what are all these people in other parts of the world in the past? How are they doing?" This is a real question that a lot of people have, and I appreciate the fact that Mike is saying we need to have faith and trust in God. I love that part. But we're not coming in here with a bad sales pitch. We're coming in here with, hey, guys, I told us more about this. And it's awesome. You're going to love the clarity that he gives on this. Okay. Tell him about the spirit. Here's world. the last two clips. Like, Here's the last two clips. Um, oh, yeah. This one's short. Mike's going to explain why we're a cult. Because he's been calling us a cult throughout the video. And oh, I think he explained this at the beginning, but I decided he to put didn't it at the resort end to, kind to of, that, did he? Oh, he's yeah. He called us a cult throughout. Oh, Good. Oh, and if you go back to the previous, our part one, how he's talking about the testimony meeting, like, oh, they're brainwashing each other. Oh, the mission's brainwashing them, all that kind of stuff. So here's him explaining why he's calling us a cult. Okay, here's Mike Winger. It's a quick little clip. Low hanging fruit. Calling the Mormons a what? <laughs> when you're talking about biblical truth, when we use the word cult, we're generally talking about a group that claims to be coming from Christianity, sometimes claims to be Christian. Christian. But it really isn't. <laughs> That's According to who? Okay. By the way, get, get, get ready Wait, to censor, so Cardin. Get ready to censor. <sighs> look, 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 look. Okay. <laughs> look, when I call someone what I really mean is they just have a different religion than me. Like, you can't, you know what I mean? Like, like if you just, honey, 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 I said fat cow. Oh, but I what? said you're a fat cow because you're a Gemini. I, I define fat cow by your astrological. You can't do that. This this to me is right up there with the white supremacy uh, argument. When Elon Musk, like I think every person that flippantly calls a Republican online or their conservative dad a white supremacist needs to make a ten dollar fine donation to the Holocaust Museum. <laughs> because there mm. were real yes there were real people my ancestors yes. died in labor camps at the hands of germans okay words have meaning words yeah. have meaning my ancestors were killed by white supremacists Wait, okay and then they were sent off to labor camps in russia by the real fascists when you want to say oh so and so didn't believe in obamacare because they're a white nationalist you need to pay ten dollars to the holocaust museum because there were real families torn apart and exterminated by real white supremacists who did real damage not just voting differently than you and mike winger before you use pejoratives as thick as a cult i'm from california in los angeles 30 people drank the Kool-Aid and killed each other because they thought a freaking comet was bringing a UFO to take them away and they needed to commit mass suicide. Loved ones have died that I know in real cults. People that bake you cookies and knock on your door and ask if you need help mowing lawns aren't in a cult. You have no functional definition of calling this a cult. And every time you do it, you need to pay a $10 <laughs> fine to the FBI department that studies cults where people are actually trying to escape but you wouldn't because you're too busy in your air conditioned office planning your mission trip no, with your pro trip again you know uh, I also <laughs> say, full as, circle as as the only guy in a room wait, wait, whose wait. mother wait. actually escaped a cult ah. okay oh, uh, yeah, there we go you know I think I can speak as somewhat a little bit of an authority on it the LDS church is far from one but second when you pointed out earlier, Cardin, 
that these guys are doing the same things that wokes do, leftists do, by reinventing words. If you just yeah. decide to redefine cult, yes. What? Okay. Hillsong Where does he United get authority? Here, wait, wait, here, 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 wait, wait, let me finish. Wait, I didn't finish know this quick. before watching the video, Kwaku. Okay. Cult actually is something used in like, uh, uh, what's the word now? Theological circles as the way that Mike is saying it. Yeah, that yeah, I actually know. is they've, they've used changed the in word. more academic senses, but the way Mike has been using the word, he's been attaching it to things like brainwashing, give us all your money, lying to get you yeah. in here. That's well, the well, way Luke, he's using they, the quote. They took the word cult, cult and they made it anything that's not mainstream Christian. Yes. They changed the definition. So my question is, the I'm assuming Mike Winger is so probably not a Democrat, right? So what authority does he have, mm -hmm. I'm going to assume, if he ever wants to criticize Democrats to the left when they have redefined what a woman is, wh what authority or what leg to stand on does he have? Yeah. Because the minute you start changing what words mean and saying, actually, we mean this when we use this word, you've given the free pass to everybody else to do it. Yes. So yeah. here's here's the, and I, I recognize that we engage in logical fallacies fallacy sometimes on here, so I, I get the irony going on. Guys, I've only what Mike once is in engaging this. with right here, <laughs> what Mike is engaging with right here is called Mott and Bailey. Mott and Bailey. So it's your, you make a broad claim, and then when people push back on it, you retreat back to a very safe to defend position. So he calls this a cult, and that has implication of Kool-Aid, like Pardon said, brainwashing, all that stuff. But then if anybody tries to push on it, he's just going to go back to this part that he said. He said, no, I was just doing the simple theological definition that people have talked about in these research papers here that say cult is just something that doesn't follow the creeds but claims to be Christian. Like, okay, no, no, but he's not addressing not us as a. It. He's not addressing us in the that's academic. That's not the way you were using that word. Yeah. No, he's not addressing us in so the here's, academic. Here's a little quote. Luke, I'm Harrison. talking. I am talking. <laughs> he had some energy you know? drinks. <laughs> okay, Luke. <laughs> I still haven't come down from the adrenaline rush. He had some Red Of Bulls. the mission trip <laughs> and the freaking <laughs> calling us a cult monologue, all right? So now I- I my time. You know, I, just, <laughs> now, I forgot what I was going to say, dang it. <laughs> so I guess we're going to have to finish the clip here. Oh, oh no, I remember Luke, what I was going to say. We already did. That he- is not addressing us, obviously. It is self-evident. He's not addressing us in the academic way. The academics speak about cargo cults and different religions that pop up around different... He's using it as its worst pejorative because that's what all of them do as they circle around their textbooks in their DeVry Divinity Schools where if you pay enough money and you regurgitate enough of the, of the lies they've circulated for 150 years, they give you your 150000 dollar degree and let you go out and make 150 grand a year off of their congregations that already have been vetted and pre-approved so you know we got one i got one more clip of me i gotta tell you i got one so, more clip so here's of me. here's the quote by harrison he's a non-member if we step back and take an honest look at how this label cult is applied it's plain to see that it's nothing more than popularity and power that separates cult from normal religions the application of this term is prejudice in practice wow that's great Wow. Well, elaborate. That's Explain beautiful. to the audience why that's significant, that quote. Uh, the people who are popular and are the larger religions get to call the other ones a cult. Yeah. And it's just a thin veneer of being able to claim that popularity contest. Well, that's well put. All okay. Right. All right. Well, then here's the last. And that was from a non-member. That was a non-member. I think he's like a psychologist or something like that. Okay. So this last this last video is kind of ironic because Mike Winger's coming at us hard oh, here. Man. And he, he addresses other points and we're not going to be able to get to because it was a two hour long thing. But I happen to go and look at some of his other videos where he's not directly addressing Mormons. And the irony here is this clip is going to be about a two minute straight clip of Mike Winger in agreeing with us on our theology for two minutes straight <laughs> oh. when he's not talking about our oh, religion. Great. OK, let's see what he's got to say. Here's Lion Mike Winger playing uh, playing the fool. Romans chapter 10, verse nine gives us like a really good, simple Boom. Here's the whole story. Here's the whole story of the gospel. And it's some people make this way more complicated than it needs to be. It says right here, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus preached repentance go. and repentance is absolutely part of the gospel. I think the confusion is when people think repentance means living perfectly, that that would be works, right? Repentance isn't even a work. It's an Wait, who thinks repentance is living perfectly? 
uh, is Hello. I've never heard the definition of the repentance is living perfectly. Uh, to me, it's it's part of the process. The straight and narrow, correctly translated, means the narrow and narrowing. This this is nonsense. The, the funny part is sometimes they'll say, "Oh, you're trying to keep the commandments. You're trying to have your works get in heaven." And here's him explaining how keeping the commandments are not works that get you into heaven. And it's like perfect. We agree on this. Yeah. Keep going, Mike. Uh, uh, okay. The attitude change. It's a heart change. I'm turning from sin to God in my heart. Faith is not a work. That's the whole nature of faith. The nature of faith is you're just believing. Like, I trust you. Yeah, but faith helps generate good works as suggested by well, you're, James yeah, if in you, the Bible. If you actually have a change of heart and a change of mind and a change in trust, that's going to manifest in a change of actions. Okay, wow. Well, and, so, and we totally agree on this, Mike. Like, this is us just agreeing with each other. So he's about to make the... So he's already resunk, recycled the cult lie. He's already recycled the you got a planet lie. He's already recycled the fake three degrees of glory mm -hmm. lie. So now he's recycling the they don't believe in faith. They Fame only works. believe in work. Well, this is a lie. separate video. This is a video of him not talking to Mormons. So I'm just kind of showing oh, how he has okay. this very nuanced theology that allows for works and repent, uh, repentance and all that stuff to be part of okay. salvation without being called a work. And it's just kind of funny how the tone changes to something more nuanced mm. Yeah. and compassionate when he's talking not to us yeah and then when he's talking to us all of a sudden it's so black and white he's like no you believe in works and yeah. works i get you in heaven and then he goes to this clip where he's not talking to us it's like well yeah you do need to follow the commandments and that shows the way that your heart is and this is an important thing to turn to god but it's not what saves you it's like yeah this sounds like it sounds like a come follow me lesson that we might have in a couple weeks here when we read this that guy would have voted this guy would have this guy would have voted and and this guy would have voted against Jesus on the Sanhedrin. This, this is literally, if you ever want to know what Nicodemus's buddies looked and sounded like, <laughs> if you ever want to know what Sadducees and Pharisees looked and sounded like, what the scholars and the scribes that could not recognize Jesus when he was standing right in front of them and chose the power structures and the establishment and their pride over the gift of the gospel that was laid right in their laps. This is exactly what it looked and sounded like. So here, we'll finish the clip. We'll finish the clip of your buddy here because I know that I think you guys, you got like a mandate somewhere at like the BYU creamery pretty soon, <laughs> right? You know, don't you, you have to apologize for us and say, Mike, I tried to talk him down from the ledge, man. <laughs> have some of this BYU creamery stuff. And he'll take it. He'll be like, well, you're paying for that, right? And I'll be like, you'll be like, yeah, 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 you're paying for that. He's like, no, 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 I got it. I got a big thick payday. I had a great sermon today. It really inspired a lot of people. You in, know? in hindsight, Luke was absolutely right to warn people about our reactions yeah. to this video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, so here and we go. I didn't even know about the red bull <laughs> yeah it's just, actually i did not have a red bull it's it's a prophecy. six red bulls he guys. disrespected six, my mission six red bulls i'm sorry <laughs> but th there's only one thing that'll get you thumped in 20 bars 10 miles north and south of camp pendleton and that's faking that you're a marine or faking that you're a naval si seal to pick up on girls it just is not tolerated you do not now, to be clear do that mike winger didn't directly do that he, he faked his mission trip. Trip. mission trip was the, he, he never, dude, he never the, the ethos trip. of that bro i'm sorry man. okay look i you don't won't know all it. about the whole like him getting money thing but i will say he's based on what he's wearing i think he's getting sponsored by jc penny's repeatedly <laughs> <Yeah>. with <laughs> these button-up shirts this, look at that. Like uh, He only has gray button-up shirts with black undershirts. That's funny. So here we go. Um, Dickies <laughs> sponsor. Actually, no, Dickies are too cool. This is like, um, uh, what's, what's uh, they oh, have it in no, Tenet? His shirt, Brooks he's, Brothers. No, it's more like the, uh, what, what's that one shop where there's always like Vietnam War veterans and like the children of immigrants just shifting Salvation piles Arlo? of clothing? Salvation Army? Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, so Deseret? Industries? No, it's all over the country. It's got the really. It's like a big department store, but it's always kind of Sears. No, no, no. Uh, 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 uh close, close, Kohl's? close. Uh, close. It starts with the O or U. Uh, uh, uh. uh oh, Coles. Uh, there's one in Provo on University. Chick Fil A. Luke, you know what I'm talking about. Ch I think Chick Fil A. No, no, no. Home Depot. I'm, I'm losing. It's it's like tan. There's the state every time there's, there's war veterans in there, yeah, and there's always children yeah, shifting through. No, no, that's too nice. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Outdoor, urban. outdoor urban outfitters. No, 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 no. Dang it! What is outdoor it? Outdoor world. God, are you? I'm, I'm finding this right now because if I don't, Gregory's head is, is about to explode. Well, this, let's just finish this, this video. This episode's been brought okay. to you by Eddie story. Bauer. Uh, you know. Okay, so let's let him finish. While he this. looks for that. Okay. 
turning from sin to God in my heart. Faith is not a work. That's the whole nature of faith. The nature of faith is you're just believing. Like, I trust you. That's not a work. That's just, it, it's something you do, but it's not a work in the sense of meriting anything. Yeah. I want to say <clears throat> the I grace of God covers you. Trust in Christ. Your sinlessness does not, you know, create or maintain your salvation. Here comes the but. But there's also another side where I want to say, but there is some point at which a person says, have I really committed to Christ? Like, is this genuine? <laughs> As well, manifest by your what? Yeah. yeah. Mike Whoa. Winger? Well, no, that's what he's saying. Because the question he's answering in this is, I feel like I've turned to Christ and accepted him as my savior, but I'm still doing really bad things. And so he's coming in with this nuance. Well, well that is all you need to do. But if your works haven't changed because of that, then maybe you should re-examine your commitment to Christ. It's like, dude, you could come and teach our come follow me in yeah. a couple weeks. He needs yes. to re-examine like, his commitment to Burlington Coat Factory. Here. That's the shirt. <laughs> the Burlington <laughs> Coat Factory button-ups. They Luke all was have trying the to make a point. He looks like he shops at Burlington <laughs> Coat Factory. I guarantee. I, like I guarantee. Luke is making a point here, no. though, that when all of a sudden he has to talk to Christian youth, he becomes a very nuanced and very kind pastor. But for some reason, when he has to talk to about Mormons or to Mormons, he becomes no different than the atheists that go against Christians, or dare I say the Jews that go against the what's the Samaritans. Something I've really noticed and that I've uh, I, I've started having more interfaith dialogues with a lot of these um, pastors from other faiths. And what I've quickly said is I've realized I can tell a true Christian pastor from one of the faker Sanhedrins in three seconds. And Mormons really are a litmus test. Why? Because we are your Samaritans. Mormons are the Samaritans wow. of modern Christianity. Wow, that's deep. And if you can treat us the way Jesus said the good Samaritan should be treated, then you actually are manifesting true Christianity. Because don't forget, it was a Samaritan woman at the well that was the first to recognize the divinity of Jesus Christ. It was a Samaritan in the parable of the good what? Samaritan that was first to demonstrate true Christian charity. It was the Samaritans that were the ones describing and amplifying the gospel, not the Jews. It was the Jews that were saying, we don't need salvation. Our father is Abraham. Mm -hmm. We have no spiritual dead. Crucify him. Okay. So Mike, a little bit more of this when you're talking to the Mormons and me thinks you're Christian, a little bit less of that. They're a cult with their own planet. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I, you could convince me you're a Christian, but everything I've seen so far, not so much. Let's finish this clip. Go. Did I really mean it? And for that person, I say, the solution is not to beat yourself up and die on, on, on this hill of your sin. It's to repent and trust in Christ and be forgiven. That's Either way, the solution is the same. You turn to Christ, deal with that sin issue. Hold on. It froze there for a second. Let me put it back up. Actually, I'm I think we can just end it there. I mean, that's beautiful. I like, singing, but that's a good ending right there. Like, Mike, right. yes. Like, that's beautiful, man. Like, for, for anybody watching this who isn't familiar, like, we just need to set something straight. I'm trying to channel Brad Whitbeck here, okay? Because Brad's yeah. not here. So I'm trying to do a little channeling of Brad Whitbeck, okay? So your family can be together forever because Jesus Christ overcame death. Death separates us all. It damns us to the abyss. And Jesus Christ sacrificed himself to build a highway out of of hell that's in the bible that's basic christian doctrine that isn't something that we just made up that's why your family can be together death cannot do you part anymore because jesus christ overcame death in sin and he restored the the uh, sealing powers so we go all over the world and spend our own money to go to these crazy places and we go home to our little apartments with bed bugs and we freeze our feet off in Siberia for two years or we sweat to death in Buenos Aires 
Not because we're getting paid like Mike well, we Whitmer's get malaria in Sierra Leone. I don't know a missionary that didn't have some form of malaria. It was malaria. in Ghana, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. in Ghana. All Ghana, right. Ghana. We do these things not because we get paid like Mike Winger gets paid or like all your pastors get paid who are trying to trick you out of reading the Book of Mormon. We don't get paid for that. We pay our own way because we sincerely have a testimony that Jesus Christ overcame death and hell, and we want that gift extended to all of God's children. It's true Jesus Christ did rise from the dead, and your family can be together forever. And if you're wondering about that, go talk to a missionary. That's my Brad Whitbeck TED Talk. Okay. I was Beautiful. about to say this guy loses weight by going to Pilates with all the ladies in his women's group. Mormon missionaries <laughs> lose weight by getting malaria in the third world. You know what I'm saying? Because we have missions, not mission trips. And then I was going to end by saying, check us out on wardradio.com. But that was beautiful, so I won't say it. Yeah. Burlington Coat Factory! <laughs> it's Burlington really Coat Factory! Burlington Coat Factory shirt. Dude. All right, really so uh, this episode has been sponsored by Burlington Coat Factory and the shirts of <laughs> Mike Get that guy Winger. some book dividers. <laughs> you know? Look, they're just so lazily slapped on there, those books in the background. We almost had go a good send-off. Yeah, and then uh, Luke Hansen, thank you so much for bringing these clips. Tell our audience where people can find you. Uh, what you do and how they can connect with you if they'd like to connect with you and sit in on your brunch with Mike Winger. They can find him in a basement with the one light bulb on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Right, I got two lights right here. Okay. And I got the one light above. This is my closet, actually. Okay. So you can find me in my closet. You can find me on the brunch with Mike Winger. You can find me at uh, the Cougar Chronicle uh, website and social media pages okay cool. and mike mike you're not wrong because you're getting paid you're not wrong because you're desperately trying to get people to join your church to leave mormons because you're getting too small you're wrong because you're wrong that's why you're wrong all right thanks for hanging out with us guys you're the it, man, Luke. i would say it's been real and it's been fun but to be honest with you oh man the disrespect of the mission service whoo boy that one took me for a loop i'll admit so anyway uh let us know where we go wrong. And Mike, as we said before, you're welcome to come on the show. Hash this out. I'll put you up in a hotel. I'd say I'd, we'd fly you up here, but it's probably faster to drive because both of us are Californians. So anyway, you are welcome to tell us where we went wrong. Check us out on wardradio.com. Right.